Installing insulation into the roof cavity of a manufactured home is typically done in one of three ways. Through the gable end, near the peak on the roof, and by lifting the roof from the side. It is important to make note that before any roof cavity insulation can be installed, no matter the method used, you will need to determine if the ceiling is structurally sound enough to support the insulation that will be added. It is also imperative to have all ceiling penetration sealed and new exhaust fans installed before the roof cavity is insulated. As in any construction or weatherization task, be sure to always wear the proper personal protective equipment or PPE. We are going to illustrate how to efficiently and effectively install insulation by cutting holes in the roof sheeting in order to gain access to the roof cavity. To perform this installation properly, you will need the following. An insulation blowing machine with a two inch hose, an electric or cordless drill, a six inch hole saw or Malco cutter, 10 snips, a six inch duct plug, a scraper, coil stock, pan head screws, peel and seal, a heat gun, NP1 caulk, a roller, and a piece of rubber garden hose slit lengthwise. The top fill method requires several holes to be drilled into the roof. The hole location should be approximately 16 inches down from the peak and located on the back side of the home to maintain aesthetics. The first hole should be 6 to 8 feet from the end of the roof and the second hole should be 12 to 16 feet beyond the previous. Continue the spacing throughout the length of the roof, making sure the placement of the holes fall between the roof trusses and are not on a roof seam. Move the hole a few inches if trusses or seams fall where the hole is meant to be drilled. After the hole locations are marked, a sheet metal patch can be cut into a 10 inch by 10 inch square. This square can be used to find center and ensure 2 inch coverage beyond the edges of each patching layer. Once the hole center locations are marked, the hole cutting can commence. Scraping the surface of the roof with your scraper may not be necessary if the roof coating is in good condition. However, if the roof coating is peeling or rusting, scraping the surface can ensure that later in the process, the patching material will bond successfully. Take the peel and seal and create a 14 inch by 14 inch square. Once cut, find and mark the center on each edge. Center the peel and seal over the hole location and mark where the peel and seal edge meets the roof on all four sides. Use the peel and seal to connect the dots between the top and bottom, left and right. Take the 10 inch by 10 inch piece of sheet metal and find center on each edge. Center the 10 inch by 10 inch sheet metal cover over the hole location and mark where the edge meets the roof on all four sides. Using the Malco cutter, drill a pilot hole at your marked center location. Making sure that your Malco cutter guide pin is set for a six inch hole, you can then set the guide pin in the pilot hole that you have just drilled. Cut the six inch hole using the cutter, ensuring that you're going clockwise. Keep firm and constant pressure, otherwise your cutter might slip. Once the hole has been cut, it is best to protect yourself and your fellow workers by installing the slick garden hose around the edge. Take a digital camera and place it into the hole and snap a few photos. Look at them to get a better idea of what obstacles lie in your way, the patterning of the trusses and any other issues that will make feeding the insulation machine hose into the cavity easier. Once you are confident you understand the layout in the roof cavity, lay your hose on top of the roof with a tip at the starting location you have chosen. Take a piece of tape and mark the hose where it meets the cut hole. This will make it easier to determine when you have successfully fed the hose as far as necessary to insulate. Begin feeding the hose through the hole and back towards your predetermined location. Once you feel you have gotten it into place, take your digital camera out once again and snap a photo of your hose location, ensuring that it is really where you want it and that it hasn't gotten caught up in an obstruction. The technician may now begin the roof cavity installation installation. The machine should be set up to blow to pressure but not to dense pack. A sample setup would mimic blowing loose fill in the attic, only with a little more pressure. Remember, equipment can vary, so be sure to check manufacturer's specifications. As you blow insulation, draw the hose back towards the hole slowly. When you have reached the hole, stop the machine and repeat the previous process. Do all of this in a clock pattern, working all the way around the circle until you have filled the cavity. Once the cavity has been filled, the next step is to patch the hole. Patching the hole correctly is the most important part of the job and involves multiple steps. The first phase is to install the 6-inch duct cap. These caps should have a lip. Insert the cap almost all the way. Stop right before pushing it down fully to caulk the edges with NP1 caulk. Once caulked on the edge, push it firmly into the hole to ensure complete coverage. After sealing the cap, apply caulk to the bottom of the 10 inch by 10 inch metal patch that will be placed over the cap. 
Run a thick bead of NP1 caulk around the exterior of the bottom side about a quarter inch to a half inch from the edge. Using the lines marked when the holes were marked off, line up the patch and place it over the cap. After placing the metal patch atop the cap, mark the location where the screws will be applied to the patch. Mark a 1 at the top, a 2 at the bottom, a 3 on the right, and a 4 on the left. These will be the first four screws that you fasten the sheet metal with. After marking numbers 1 through 4, make marks every inch between the numbers along the exterior of the sheet metal. These will be secondary screws. After the first four screws have been set, pick one of the corners to finish. Work from the numbers towards the corner. Alternate the sides that you are screwing in to eliminate the possibility of wrinkling in the metal. After installing the sheet metal patch, you are now ready to apply the peel and seal. Line up the peel and seal in the marks made earlier. Be sure to start at the top and pull the paper back off working the peel and seal into place. Use a heat gun and a roller to smooth out the wrinkles and to create a lasting bond to the manufactured home roof. Once the wrinkles are flattened out and you are pleased with the installation, caulk may be applied to the patch. Caulk around the exterior of the patch making sure to get the whole exterior. Once you are done caulking the whole patch, smooth out the caulk to make sure it is sealed completely. This process can be repeated for all the holes that will be cut.